Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends, guys. Welcome back to our slash entitled people, where people believe that they can do what they want when they want because they're special. And in today's episode, we've got thieving Karens, people trying to steal homes from others, trespassing idiots, destroying property. Oh boy, get ready to shake your heads. I hope you enjoy the lineup. Hit subscribe if you're not subscribed, and you can send or link your post to this email right here. Alright, so I'm a 26 year old female and I live in a rented house with a single mother who's 30 years old and her son who's 6. I don't mind living with her and her kid, it's fine, we kind of do our own thing. I also spend a lot of time at my boyfriend's place or working and our work schedules collide so we really don't interact much. But when we do, it's fine, no issue there. I also want to start with saying that she clearly struggles financially but I don't think it's an excuse, I don't make a lot of money either. With that said, recently, I've noticed that my food would go missing or portions would be taken from it. I assumed it was her kid, so I asked her if she could stop him from eating my food. I was calm about it, and she just said she would. It didn't really upset me when it first started. It started getting annoying when I'd get home from work and expect to have a meal's worth of leftovers in the fridge, only to see it picked through or just gone. I kept bringing it up, and she started getting annoyed with me for bringing it up, telling me to not keep food in the fridge. Just from observing them, I realized that neither of them ever eat vegetables. And judging by the food that would get picked through and the food that would be untouched, anything with green in it was avoided. My orange chicken would usually be gone, but chicken and broccoli would be untouched. So I started putting vegetables in everything. I find vegetables to be delicious, and anything green or not a potato does not get eaten. So I could mix some bell peppers into food and it would be fine. I make a big portion of vegetables pretty frequently anyways, so I started putting it in everything I eat. If I had leftover mashed potatoes, I would pour green beans in and mix it up. If I had leftover cheesy bacon fries, I would pour broccoli all over it and mix it in really well. Usually my homemade stuff has vegetables in it, but I started making sure everything did. I made a pot of mac and cheese, the kids favorite thing and I poured in roasted brussels sprouts, which is actually delicious to me and I'm eating more vegetables so it's a win-win. She had been seemingly annoyed but we were all home when I made a pot of mac and cheese. She was in the living room and she saw me get out the brussels sprouts and she was like, what are you gonna do with that? And I poured them in. She then got mad and said I was being greedy and annoying. I just said I like brussels sprouts and that was it. She then said to me, we need food too. And that's when I told her to go get some, or stop buying only prepackaged things and your money will go further. I think she sees this as some big act of revenge, but I simply want to be able to eat my food. Also, I want to add that the sharing is not the issue. It's expecting to have food there, and it's not. So often, I'd be working a long day, and I would get home expecting to have a meal's worth of food, and it being all gone. Or I would wake up in a rush, had my food ready to eat in the morning, only to find it gone, so now I have to skip breakfast. If she would simply text or ask me, hey, is it okay if we eat this food item, I would know and know to make other plans. I would stop for food, or know I have to whip something up when I got home. Also, I think eating the last of someone else's food is crazy and rude. If someone makes a big pot of something and you ask for a serving, sure. But if someone made something and there's one serving left and you eat it without permission, that's evil as hell. Yeah, honestly, there is no reason for OP to have to justify why they did what they did. Like, it's their food, they paid for it and cooked it, and therefore it's not greedy to expect to eat it when you want to eat it. The mom's the one being greedy. And clearly she's expecting OP to feed her kid. But like, with that said, times are tough for a lot of people right now, especially with the crazy inflated grocery prices, guys. But like OP said, sending a text asking before just taking makes a huge difference. So here's some backstory. This took place in the 90s, in case anything seems not up to date. My mom had just bought her first house with my dad, and my mom's aunt and uncle were going through financial struggles at the time, and their house got foreclosed on. Being the generous people they are, my parents decided that they could rent out their semi-finished basement they had. They accepted, and moved in a couple of weeks later. The first days went fine, or so my parents thought, and they respected their privacy and didn't go down there and my aunt and uncle came up to eat dinner with my parents in the evenings. Then, a strange smell started seeping upstairs, so my parents investigated. And here's where our lovely story begins, as my parents encountered their aunt and uncle, and they were definitely on some sort of something because it was wild. 
My mom knocks on the door that led to the basement. There was no response. She then cracks the door open and calls for them, and oh boy did hell break loose. Here's the conversation that follows. The aunt and uncle basically said, How dare you invade our privacy? We're calling the cops. My dad says, Well, good luck with that. What's going on down here and what's that smell? Don't tell me you're doing drugs down here. The uncle replies, Are you kidding me? We would never do that. You're trespassing. Get out. My mom then raised her voice angrily and said, I'm sorry, but this is our house that we rightfully own. Could we please check on what's going on down there? It smells very strange and we're concerned. That's when the aunt says, absolutely not. You need to respect our privacy. Go away or we'll call the police. That's when my dad says, first off, by the looks of it, that might not be a good idea. Second, this is our house, again, and we're just checking up on your well-being. The aunt then says, who are you jumping down our throats, claiming that we're doing absolutely terrible things? That's when my mom says, hey, we're not accusing you of anything. We've caught whiff of some quite horrendous odors. Are you doing drugs? The uncle says, we would never do that. Go back upstairs or we'll call the cops. Dad responds, I don't know what you think you'll get out of this cop thing, but regardless, I will ask you guys to leave the house, as obviously you're acting in a terrible manner. And I'm sure you're at least doing one type of drug down here, and I'm just as certain that you're trashing the place. I've made a terrible mistake by allowing you rats in here. Hearing Dad say that, Aunt screams, Oh my goodness, what did you call me? Wait until I tell the police this. So at this point, my parents had enough. They start walking down the stairs, and when they came down, they were met with the most astonishing scene that they've ever seen. The place was absolutely destroyed. The beautiful living set that my dad inherited from his dad was destroyed. There were holes everywhere in the couch, covered in cigarette ash. There were also heaps of drugs all over the table. Damages were in the thousands. What happened next was a ton of yelling, fighting, and the aunt and uncle playing the victim card. Of course, my parents called the cops, and when the police arrived, the bad situation went further south. That's when the entitled aunt screams, Thank goodness you arrived, officers. These two horrible people broke into my home, they ransacked my house for no reason, and then both of them won't leave. We demand you arrest these people immediately. Now, the officers were just as dumbfounded because it was obvious what happened. My mom told them everything, and you could smell the drugs from Timbuktu. After investigating and talking to my parents, the police talked to them and said, Ma'am, I'm sorry, but you and your husband are under arrest for possession of drugs and destruction of private property. That's when the uncle says, Excuse me? What the hell do you think you're doing? You're telling me that you're on this rat side? Great. He then grabs a broken beer bottle and lunged at the officer. That's when Officer 2 tackles him just in time, and they both arrest him. Now, assault with a deadly weapon and evading arrest are now added to their list of charges. Congratulations. The uncle threw around a bunch more insults and slurs, and both of them were sent off to county jail. The entitled aunt got locked up for multiple drug charges, among other offenses, and the uncle got screwed even more for the attempted assault part. My parents cut contact with them, of course, and I'm pretty sure they're still homeless today. Yeah, guys, I don't know anything about drugs, so I couldn't tell you what those two were on to make them act that crazy and out of their minds. And with that said, I'm just going to assume, with knowing all the drugs that were in Opie's parents' house, that the two might have lost their other house to a drug problem, which is super unfortunate. Another example of no good deed goes unpunished, guys. So for some context, my childhood was spent growing up in Dubai, in a villa compound, which is basically like a mini gated community of 16 odd villa homes that each have a private back garden, that then converges into a large shared space with a pool, social area, foliage, etc. Now, as a result of this, everyone got to know their neighbors very well, due to the shared social space. And as most homes had kids, we would all play together in the pool. Now, there was a particular family with two very entitled children who we'll call Anna and Francis, not their actual names, who must have been about 9 or 10 years old. These little turds were well known for causing trouble in the community, and generally being extremely entitled. One story that sticks out to me is the following, which I hope you enjoy. One afternoon, my younger brother runs into our house, having played in a group with some other kids and Anna and Francis, very frustrated. He announces to me that Anna and Francis are currently in our private back garden, ripping the heads off of all of our flowers. 
I, of course, go outside to find the two gremlins ripping apart plants and kicking our hedges, while being supervised by their nanny, who spoke very little English. I basically say, what do you think you're doing? Anna says, F you, we can do what we want. I tell them, you need to stop that and get out of our garden. The nanny just stood there with a vacant expression on her face, so I walk up to her as the kids continue to destroy our garden. I say to her, excuse me, aren't you gonna do something? To which the nanny responds, no, they do what they want until dinner. I tell her, this is our garden, you need to make them leave, please. This time, no response, besides vacant blinking. So naturally, my younger brother and I turn to the gremlins and we very firmly tell them, stop and get out now, and start to usher them towards the exit. And this is where Anna drops some big threats. She says, my mother owns this whole compound and we own your house. To which I respond, she really doesn't, now get out. Anna then says again, we own your house so we can break anything we want. We can do anything we want. We'll get you kicked out. At this point, we've pushed them out, followed meekly by their nanny, and locked the garden gate. On the other side, they hurl obscenities and eventually run to find their entitled mother. I am told by my own mom that she had a heated conversation with the entitled mom, who did in fact not own the compound, nor our house. But she was very displeased that her children's fun was interrupted by my brother and I. In her words, apparently we have no right to upset or interfere in matters involving her children and we need to keep our business to ourselves, or the landlord would be called. Suffice to say, my mom wasn't having any of it, and she asked politely that her kids don't invite themselves into our garden again, and don't destroy our property, which was in fact grounds to involve the landlord. With that, the entitled mom left in a huff, and we didn't hear them for a couple of weeks, thankfully. But it wouldn't be long before we cross paths with their BS again. Guys, the entitlement is crazy with this. Like, I can't believe the mom let her kids destroy Opie's property and then had the nerve to say, you need to let my kids have fun. If they want to destroy your property, let them. Like, if that's the case, I would have found out where she lived, gone into her backyard, and started picking apart her garden, see how they like it. And spoiler alert, cops would be called so fast because people like that hate when you mess with their things, but they can mess with yours for some reason. So I've shared many of my loss prevention shenanigans over the few years, but I wanted to share with you the one story that always gets a shocked response whenever it's told. Now, over my loss prevention career at different locations, I've been assaulted, I've been spit on, I've seen a large woman remove $600 worth of clothes from her fat rolls, and I've even ran a couple of miles to grab a suspect. But this is the only time that I've ever seen a parent neglect their baby. Now, shoplifters using children is nothing new, and usually it incurred a charge of child endangerment. However, sometimes the cops would let it slide if the person cooperated and the child was so young that they had no way of knowing what was going on. With that being said, we begin our tale. On one fine sunny afternoon, I'm working doing my loss prevention thing. My female co-worker, who we'll call Stacy, is watching these two women pushing a baby carriage around, with a blanket covering the inside of the carriage. The two are acting suspicious, they're removing clothing without looking at size, style, or price, and they're taking multiples of each item classic signs of shoplifting. The two girls eventually proceed into a female fitting room, and my coworker goes to get ready to verify that they did not exit with the items and that the fitting room was empty. Now our store was two stories right in the middle of the mall, and this fitting room was in the top story near the exit to the mall. Sure enough, the two girls exit with not a single piece of clothing to be seen. Stacy goes in, verifies the stalls are empty, and right at this time, the girls are exiting. I tell Stacy that the stop is good and to proceed. Now, the loss prevention office was on the other side of the store near the parking lot, so I had to exit the office and proceed through the store to get to my coworker just in case something happened, without running or causing a scene. So as I'm rounding the final corner at a fast walk, I hear Stacy yelling, Hey, stop! Come back! I round the corner, and out in the mall, about 40 yards away, I see Stacy with the baby stroller. No suspects in sight. I run over to Stacy, and she's standing there going, they both ran opposite directions, but I didn't go because there was actually a baby in here. They left a baby behind to steal some clothes. And I'm thinking, what? Now they actually left a real live baby, presumably one of theirs, in the stroller while they ran. That's when I told Stacy to call the cops and to bring the kid inside and take care of it, and I would chase after one of them. 
Stacy then points the way of the food court and said, the big one went that way. And like a slightly overweight lion, chasing after a gazelle the size of a hippo, the chase was on. Now, our company, as do most, have rules of when you can and can't engage a shoplifter, and when you can and can't give chase. As with most stores, if they go into a public parking lot, you can't chase, as that's a liability. However, in the mall, we had a good standing. So as long as they were in a public mall space and I wasn't knocking old women or people out of the way, I could chase them to my heart's content. At this point, Suspect A, who we'll call Queen Hippo, had a 20 to 30 second head start. But our mall was straight, so I could see her waddling in the distance. And with that, I take off, gaining ground, trying not to run into anyone. Mall security sees me, and they start squawking on the radio. Anyways, I catch up with the girl in the food court. And as I'm commanding her to stop, she turns and starts attempting to swing at me. She actually tried to fight me when she couldn't run anymore. Fortunately for her, the police who are always in the mall have been alerted, and they're right there, so they grab her before I can. She then starts yelling that I'm chasing her for no reason, and I'm trying to grab her goodies. The cops, who are very familiar with me, naturally just look at me and say, what have we got today? I tell them shoplifting pants and such. She of course continues to say that she doesn't know what we're talking about, and for the cops to arrest me because, again, quote, I'm trying to feel her up. So that's when I drop the big bombshell and say, Okay, so we'll get this sorted out, but first I need to know, the baby you abandoned back there in the stroller, is it yours or the other girl's? Of course, hearing that, the cops naturally have a what the F look on their face. I then explain that the two women left a baby behind when they ran after they were caught shoplifting and that Stacy had it. The girl starts saying that it's her baby, and that her friend said that she'd watch it while she ran from me because, again, she was feeling unsafe because I kept trying to touch her. I explained that her friend took off too and left the baby there. She then says that she doesn't know what I'm talking about and I'm lying. At this point, the cops tell her to shut up and start dragging her back to our office. I radio Stacy, let her know that we're on our way back. She informs me that the kid's okay, and we have Queen Hippo's license in her purse, so that's even more proof. So we get Queen Hippo back in the office, cops search her, and we sit down. We show the cops everything we have. They interview Stacy to get her side with the baby, who was like 8 or 9 months or so. So the cops sit down and explain to Queen Hippo that the Department of Child Services is going to be contacted for an investigation. But if she lied to them even once and didn't tell them everything, then they would call them now to have the baby taken away within the hour. Naturally, Queen Hippo broke down, told us who her friend was, who they were stealing for, and even where they were fencing the goods they stole. Full on information that was gold to us. Her friend was contacted and told to turn herself in by the end of the day or she'll be charged with child endangerment as well. Queen Hippo had her kid taken away while they did the investigation and we got our merch back and we also got to play with the cute baby for an hour while the cops did their thing. All in all, it was a good day. Guys, it makes me so sad that the mom just abandoned her 9 month old when she was caught stealing. Like what was she thinking and what was her plan? Like even if she got away, I'm fairly certain that cops would sooner or later link the child to her. Like did she forget or did she leave the baby behind on purpose so she could get away quicker? This person shares their experience and says, I was a department head for a certain store with a giraffe for a few years. We were watching a shoplifter, waiting for her to pass the registers to stop her. She ends up running out of the store into the busy supermarket next door and we lost her. A minute or two later, we had a child in the store looking for mommy. When I asked her what her mom looked like to help find her, the little girl hands me a slip of paper with her grandmother's contact information. So I gave her a call and the woman began to sob that her daughter had done it again and please don't call the police. The little girl's mother was the shoplifter who ran out of the store. She had done this multiple times before. She would bring her daughter to places and leave her behind to get away, giving her daughter a slip of paper to give a store employee or the police so she would be safe. We needed to call the police, and they managed to determine a car in the parking lot belonged to the woman. So they waited in an unmarked car about 20 minutes later when the woman returned, and they stopped her and arrested her. Now I'm not sure what the conversation was, but they recovered a lot of stuff from her trunk that belonged to a bunch of stores in the mall. For whatever reason, the police let her leave with her daughter, despite abandoning her to get away.
I used to be a bouncer at a very busy nightclub, and I was the only female because they needed someone that could legally keep an eye on the ladies' room. At the time, I was about 5'5", five 130 pounds, and I could possibly hold my own in any military physical drill if I wanted. And I'm not bragging, I'm now fat and old, and I'm jealous of my past self. Anyways, on that night, some really big-headed muscle guy came in with a giggling drunk bimbo, and they tried to go into a bathroom stall together. And not just any stall, the only handicapped stall. So I get in front of him and stopped him from entering. He then asked me what I thought I could do about it. The guy had not yet processed the fact that I worked there, and I wasn't just some girl upset that he was in the ladies' room. I said it didn't matter what I could do. I would just hit my whistle, and my boss, George, would arrive in a couple of seconds flat. Hearing me say that, the guy just scoffs and says, a little girl ain't gonna do anything to him. Now, because we were so very busy, we had multiple bouncers, and no one was supposed to handle a customer on their own, so we all had whistles. The big guy starts getting attitude, and he starts standing so close and getting in my face that he's almost touching me. The whole time he's yelling at me, trying to intimidate me. So that's when I blew my whistle. And at that point, he raises his hand to hit me, and that was all I needed. I grew up on a farm, and I knew how to manhandle angry animals, some that were five times my size or more, including dogs, hogs, horses, goats, etc. I knew it was all about finding a weak spot and controlling their center of gravity. So I duck, went for a low center of balance, and basically did a lovely WWE spear, taking him back about 5 feet into the wall. The guy stayed flat against the wall, and then looked towards the exit, maybe hoping to escape. And that's when I realized, there stood my manager, leaning on the doorframe, smiling. The poor man looked so defeated, and at this point, all the girls in the bathroom, including the one he was trying to score, had just witnessed him getting manhandled by a tiny girl. So he just looks at my boss, and he asked, So, you're George. George nods without a word, and gestured towards the door. The man left the club on his own, without raising another moment of fuss. Never mess with small bouncers, there's a reason they were hired. Yeah, the only thing worse than a self-entitled idiot is a drunk self-entitled idiot guy looking to cause trouble, and I'm glad the only thing hurt that night was his ego. But seriously, really? Women's handicapped bathroom stall, that's the place they both chose? Some people are wild, I tell ya. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash entitled people. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the stories today. If you did, hit that thumbs up. And if you missed the last episode on the channel, I will link it right here. It's another r slash entitled people episode, where a Karen calls 911 on OP because she refuses to pay rent. It's a wild story. Go check it out if you haven't. And myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.